what China just did shocked America. Although emerging later in the space race, China has actually surpassed the US, namely NASA and SpaceX, many times. Take for example in 2021, when it placed at the top of the world with 55 space missions. And it also became the first country to own its very own exclusive space station, the Tiangong. But no one can forget, or shouldn't forget, that China has become the first in the world to use methane liquid oxygen rockets. Not even SpaceX has accomplished this feat. But no matter how many times they overcome the US and SpaceX, Beijing is still obsessed with Starlink, SpaceX's subsidiary broadband internet satellite division. Why is China so down bad for Starlink? And how do they plan to beat it as well as the whole of the US? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. So, why is China so concerned about Starlink? As you may have known, there are roughly 8,000 active satellites in orbit and half of them belong to Starlink's satellites. More interestingly, all of them are in low Earth orbit, or LEO. To understand the reasoning why LEO is a perfect zone for satellites, we need to first understand what is LEO and then what advantages are there for satellites that stay in LEO. In space, the position of satellites plays an important role and for decades traditional satellites have concentrated on geostationary orbit, or GEO. GEO satellites are at a very high altitude from Earth's surface at 22,000 miles, which is a little over 35.4 thousand kilometers. Thus, at this distance, those satellites can cover a wide range of area and remote parts on Earth alike. Yet, it takes longer to beam data to users. In other words, we call this issue high latency and slower speeds. By contrast, LEO is closest to the Earth's surface at no more than 1,200 miles, which is nearly 2,000 kilometers. So, the area covered by LEO satellites is considerably less than GEO ones. But the internet speeds will be more stable and faster. Since 2019, SpaceX has been launching thousands of mass-produced small satellites named Starlink in LEO by its own Falcon 9 rocket. The Falcon 9 rocket is equipped with a reusable booster to cut the cost per launch and in the future, they intend to use Starship, a heavy launch system capable of hauling 100 tons of cargo to LEO and is promised to be fully reusable, meaning both first and second stages will come home. With a much much larger payload capacity, SpaceX aims to deploy the Starlink version 2.0, which is bigger in size and has an increased bandwidth. SpaceX's goal for Starlink is to spread 42,000 Starlink satellites around the world after 2023. This is not an exaggeration to say that Starlink is a milestone for the prosperity of America and the world. With the wide bandwidth and 55% coverage in space, we have Starlink to thank for the high internet speeds in a lot of areas around the globe, even remote and rural places. When everybody gets faster internet access, they can connect to each other more conveniently. Thus, the activities and communication and trade will be enhanced. For the United States in particular, the success of Starlink helps the US to have more alliances and assert its top rank on the international market. Starlink has also become a real moneymaker for its its parent company, SpaceX, when more and more government agencies become a valued customer. According to SpaceX, the revenue generated by 2025 is expected to be more than $30 billion, while its total cost from the design to deployment step is equivalent to $10.73 billion in 2021, with the possibility of being cheaper when Starship gets into the mix, which will then carry more satellites than even the Falcon Heavy per launch. Starlink satellites are very cool, but what will happen if military
military agencies want to apply it to war? Well, it might become a sticky situation. Let's take a look at the following examples. Musk's Starlink was asked for assistance during the Ukraine war in 2022. Starlink responded by activating countrywide service and the first shipment of terminals arrived in February 28th of the same year. After that, the Ukrainian military used Starlink to connect its drones to attack Russian forces. Ukrainian soldiers uploaded images of potential targets via a mobile network enabled by Starlink. These are then sent to an encrypted group chat full of artillery battery commanders. Those commanders then decide whether to shell the target and if so, from where. According to the report, the Ukrainian soldiers run about 300 information gathering missions each day. The sophistication of Starlink shocked Russia, so Moscow planned to test secretive weapons to target this dangerous war asset. And if what Musk's satellites just did in Ukraine shocks you, it's nothing compared to its next militaristic iteration. Star Shield, which was tailored for use in national security efforts by government agencies. The initial application of Star Shield is around three areas, embracing Earth observation, communications, and hosted payloads, or the ability to put a wide variety of instruments on the Star Shield satellite bus. There isn't much detail to go by in terms of its capabilities, but Star Shield is still expected to be efficient in what it is designed to do. Perhaps what concerns China in the upcoming years is not Starlink exactly, but its expansion and militarization. Once Starlink is present everywhere on Earth, there won't be room in space for China anymore, meaning that all of their orbital plans will fail. And let's not forget that China's dreams of global domination will be shattered to pieces. Wary of the situation, China has been planning in silence a project called Guo Wang, or GW, to send a 13,000 satellite mega constellation aiming at hindering or potentially damaging the Starlink network and gaining a foothold itself somewhere in LEO. In 2018, China revealed its plans for the very first LEO satellite communication constellation for the nation. At the time, it was known as Hong Yan, but the project was paused at the experimental stage. However, two years later in 2020, that project was absorbed by the new Guo Wang project. And after three years, the project, which is still in development, will be kicked off by a Long March 5B rocket that'll be equipped with a Zhuan Zheng 2 second stage for the first time. This maiden integrated launch will take place in the second half half of 2023 as planned. To send more satellites to LEO in the future, they must also focus on developing types of rockets that will be more powerful and reusable, much like SpaceX's Falcon 9. Okay, you don't need to be that much like Falcon 9. Take for example the Long March 9 and Palace 1. In addition, they used a copycat technique to create a liquid methane oxygen rocket, a miniature version of Starship and achieved an amazing result. In 2023, they hit the record with the Zhuchui 2 carrier rocket, the first ever liquid methane oxygen rocket reaching orbit that's never been done before by any private companies, even SpaceX. But that's not all. Similar to SpaceX, China set a goal to bring its satellites into many areas abroad throughout the international collaboration program. Since 2013, the Chinese government has founded the Belt and Road Initiative to invest in more than 150 countries and international organizations. Last year, there were 149 space cooperation agreements with 46 national space agencies, including countries across Africa, Europe, and Asia, on the Beidou satellite system that competes with the U.S.-owned GPS. Along with the government, major Chinese companies built infrastructure across across the world, 
70% of 4G network infrastructure across Africa belongs to Huawei, for example. It's safe to say that beating Starlink and maintaining a presence in orbit are just baby targets in their plans to smash the United States. China realizes that their ambition will never ever come true if they continue to rely upon American technology, which resulted in the most insane innovation so far. Being the first and only country in the globe to own its own space station, and that space station is named Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace. Starting in 2021, after a three-year construction period with a huge number of spacecraft coming and going, Tiangong finally came into operational phase. The main purpose of the Tiangong are to basically replace the ISS after 2031 and serve the space race to the moon and Mars for China afterward. To protect this crucial orbital space, China never welcomed the US satellite's Starlink around it due to the fear of security. But besides that, they also want to clean the way for their ongoing and upcoming spacecraft and observation from Earth. Let's imagine how hard it is for the Chinese to travel in LEO while Starlink blankets the entire globe. But the crazy idea is don't stop there. The rapid growth in the aerospace industry in China has alarmed SpaceX and the old wolf of America about the fact that they should not underestimate Eastern wisdom. Even though they fell behind in rocket technology at the beginning, China, with baby steps, gradually proved that they have the potential to become a formidable opponent of both SpaceX and the U.S. aerospace industry as a whole. It's shown clearly through the records in space that China has gotten within recent years. However, many people believe that to beat a giant aerospace leader like SpaceX, China might need more. First of all, a reusable rocket. While the Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX has done its 50th mission to send satellites in LEO this year, China doesn't have any reusable rockets yet. Beijing and startup companies have boosted the progress of building them though, and it'll take much longer to test, fix, and redesign compared to the way that SpaceX did with Falcon 9 and Starship. Nevertheless, the race between China and SpaceX is still very long and promises to be one of the most worth watching in the 21st century. How about you? Which one do you think will be the winner of this race? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.